Hello, I'm Lewis from DIY Machines, and today I'm going to show you how to build your own 3D printed smart plant pot. It has a built in reservoir to store water, there's a soil moisture sensor to monitor the plant, an integrated pump to water it when we need it, the enclosure is fully 3D printed and watertight and the LED will alert you when the water tank needs topping up. You're going to need a few of your own components to build your own smart plant pot. I've put links in the description below to where you can find these items on Amazon. You're going to need some wire, an Arduino Nano. I've soldered all my pieces together on a perma proto board, but if you just want to use a breadboard, that's absolutely fine. Two M3 by 10 bolts, an NPN 222 transistor, a soil moisture sensor, and a water level sensor along with its sensor module, a small submersible pump, about five centimeters of tubing, a single three millimeter LED, a 4.7 kilo ohms resistor, and a one kilo ohm resistor. Now I've printed the 3D parts in mine with PLA plastic. I've used two different colors. You can use whichever filament or material you're most comfortable with, but just remember to check that your print is watertight before you switch on the electronics. Let's get started. Depending on which layer height you choose, I did mine at 0.15 millimeters, the 3D prints may take some time with this project. Whilst they're printing, we'll start assembling our circuit board. You'll find that your soldering goes a lot better if you have some common tools to help you. You'll need some soldering tin, a solder rare, I'm using this battery powered one, some wire trimmers, and some helping hands. So we'll start by soldering our Arduino Nano onto our circuit board. Now, I'm gonna show you step by step where to solder which wire, going by the coordinates, the letters and numbers on this board. So you can follow me step by step if you like, or if you prefer, you'll find a circuit diagram in the description below, and you can go ahead and do this on your own. So the pin on your Arduino Nano, marked as D12, wants to pass through hole H7, once you have it in place, you can turn it over and then you'll need to solder these connections Let's go ahead and add our two resistors and transistor The transistor is mounted in holes C24, 25 and 26 With the face of it, this flat face here, facing towards the nano Once you've finished soldering the legs, use your wire clips to trim off the legs. Now we'll add our 4.7 kilo ohms resistor. This is the one with the bands going yellow, purple, red. One leg in A25, another in A28. And now the one kilo ohm resistor goes through J18 and J22. Now we'll attach two wires to the two legs on our LED. Each of the wires wants to be about seven centimeters in length. And once you've attached them, use a little bit of insulation tape or heat shrink if you have it to help prevent the circuit from shorting out. The positive end of the LED, that's along with the two legs, is soldered to J17 and the other wire is attached to I22. Before we attach the pump, we need to extend its wires. For this, Use two 13 centimeter lengths. We'll then attach this to the circuit board later. We can prepare the water level sensor by soldering three wires to its terminals. Use 20 centimeters of wire here, and then we can always reduce the length later if we need to. Now we'll add three 10 centimeter wires to D0, ground, and VCC terminals of the soil moisture sensor module. Then, solder the wire from D0 to J12 on the board. The ground wire goes anywhere along this ground rail, and then VCC goes to hole C8. Solder two 25cm wires to the positive and negative pins. Now, let's finish our transistor's connections. Use a short piece of wire to connect hole B26 to the ground rail, and another to connect the ground rail to ground via hole A20. The other side of our resistor is connected to the Arduino's digital pin number 12 by soldering a wire between holes C28 
and J7. Now, before we begin connecting our 3D printed parts with our electronics we've been assembling, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank my two newest Patreon supporters. That's John from Dorset in England and Vincent Verbeck from Brittany in France. Thank you to both of you. If you'd like to consider supporting DIY machines, then check out the link to our Patreon page up here in the corner and down in the description. Now, let's carry on with your project. Use some hot melt glue to fix the water level sensor inside the pot, making sure that the top of the module is in line with the top of its mounting point. Then push the three wires down this hole and continue pushing them until they pop out the other end. Now would be a great time to label them whilst you remember which wires are connected to what. And whilst we have the glue gun hot, we can fix the LED into position. Thread the two wires for the water pump through the same hole as earlier and label again. Now, take your length of rubber tubing and use it to connect the water pump to the bottom of the inner pot. Now that you've attached the pump to the inner pot, we can lower this inside the outer pot. You need to watch for this groove here. This groove here is where the wires want to pass through as you insert it. So line it up with the pot and lower it into place. So that's the inner pot and outer pot assembled. Next you'll need the stand which we were working on earlier with our electronic components in it. You're going to take the wires from the bottom of the two pots and feed them through this large hole here in the base. Like that. Now, we're going to take the two wires that are coming from our moisture sensor module and feed these back down through the hole until they come out the top. There we go. A little bit later, we'll be attaching our moisture sensor to these two wires. But for now, we'll turn it back upside down and we're going to work on the bottom for a little bit longer. We can now solder the wires from the water pump to holes B18 and B24. The ground wire from the water level sensor can be connected to anywhere along the ground rail. The positive lead is connected to hole A8 on the board and the sensor output wire is connected to A13. This is how it's going to look when we are done. All of the excess cabling is stored underneath the board and we've glued the moisture sensor onto one of the walls. Use the two M3 by 10 screws to hold the board in place. Now we can connect a USB cable to the Arduino Nano and flip everything back the right way up. If everything has gone to plan, then we can begin by adding your own plant and tweaking the values to suit your personal project. Now you can use any type of plant you like. If you like, you can have succulents, palms or pea sillies. Uh, I'm gonna be potting this one up as my plant, so I'll go ahead and pot that up now. There you go, there's my plant potted up. Just be careful when you pot yours up to ensure that you don't get any soil down the hole in the center of the pot or this one here on the corner. We have one last thing to solder. We'll add our soil moisture sensor onto this pair of wires here. You can find a link to the code in the description below. Download it and then use the Arduino IDE to upload it to your Nano. Once this is complete, open the serial monitor and we should see and hear a couple of things happen. When the Arduino restarts, the LED should flash five times quickly to let you know that the code is uploaded and running. Then, the serial monitor will print the current water level reading. After a few more seconds, you should hear the pump start up as we don't yet have a reading for the soil moisture sensor, and then the LED should also blink as we have yet to add any water to the tank. The reading for the moisture of the soil is set by turning the potentiometer. This is best done when the soil is just about to reach the point at which you would like to water the plant again. Use a screwdriver or similar to turn the potentiometer until the second LED comes on. Then go back slightly until it turns off. This is then set correctly. Now we can turn our attention to the water level sensor. Let's upload some temporary alternative code that will let us find the correct threshold value we need for this. 
Again, you'll find the code linked below. It's called Water Tank Threshold Test. Once uploaded, open the serial monitor to see the values being printed to the screen. Now slowly pour water into the tank until the reading begins to rise. At this point, stop and note the average value it's now posting. This is the threshold at which we want the smart plant pot to alert us that we need to top up the water tank. Now we can turn our attention back to the main code. Enter the value we just worked out for the water level sensor into the variable for water level threshold. I'm going to set 380 for mine. Now is also a good time to set the check interval to 180,000. This means it will check the moisture level of the soil once every hour. And you should also set the empty reservoir timer to 900. This means that when the water reservoir is running low on water, the light will flash for 30 minutes for us to see before it goes through another cycle of checking the water level and seeing if the plant needs any watering. And then here is where you can adjust how much water will be pumped each time we go to water the plant. If you increase this, more water will be delivered. And if you decrease this, less will be delivered. This will be down to personal preference. I'm gonna set mine to 300 and see how that goes. You can always come back and adjust this one later. Once you're finished, upload this to your Arduino and then we can fill the tank up with water. Now watch for this water overflow hole here. This is designed to stop you from overfilling it and damaging any of the electronics. And that's it. You're done with your smart plant pot. If you like, you can print some more in other colors or how about checking out some of our other projects such as this Bluetooth remote controlled BB-8 robot, entirely 3D printed, a drone lap timer, or a word clock, which tells you the time by highlighting words hidden in its clock face. Don't forget to have a look at our Patreon page if you'd like to support this channel. Otherwise, until next time, ciao for now.